Hey everyone, it's Bloom here, and welcome to my Let's Play of Kadalka, which is my favorite, uh, probably my favorite RPG of all time, my favorite PlayStation game of all time, and my favorite horror game of all time, if you can consider it a horror game. And uh, unlike other games that I would consider some of my favorites, I can't even properly articulate why I love this game so much, or at least it's going to take a very long time for me to... Um, to tell you why I love this game so much. But luckily, the battles are very long. Um, the battles are very long and boring. Um, which, as you can probably guess, um, it's, this isn't a game for everyone, but I personally love it. And hopefully I can um, share uh, the reasons why I love this game so much to you throughout this playthrough. Um, the only thing I will say before we begin because there will be plenty of time to talk, um, is that this is the prequel to Shadow Hearts, the 100% canonical prequel to Shadow Hearts. But um, you will see that it's very, very different uh, to the Shadow Hearts game and very, very different to Shadow Hearts Covenant and very, 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 very different to Shadow Hearts from the New World, which are great games in their own right. Sh Shadow Hearts uh, and Shadow Hearts Covenant are certainly great games, and I will do Let's Plays of them as well, but they're very different. Um, so we're going to get started, and I'm not going to talk during the FMVs or cutscenes. Uh, I just want you to be able to experience them as they are. So let's go. Well, let's go. One thing, Chekhov's gun right there. Remember that. Too early, Angel. I'm not dead yet. Not yet, but it looks like you're going to die soon. Maybe. But you'll have to pardon me while I tend to some unfinished business first. Business? What can you possibly accomplish in your condition? You can't even hold your gun steady. Well, no unless I try. That thing's not gonna die unless I shoot it two or three times. opening FMVs. Very long. Very long FMVs. They really take their time, which is why this game, despite being only like 10 hours long, is on four discs. 
four CDs. Okay, so I'll explain what everything does. Uh, the action, you can attack, which, uh, since you're using a gun right now, that would be a ranged attack. Um, magic, you could heal yourself, um, or up your strength, vitality, dexterity, intelligence, PD, mind, agility, and luck. I'll explain what all those do in a little bit. You can also switch your weapon. Um, I do not recommend going up to them and fighting them, uh, going uh, I don't I don't recommend like switching to the knife or whatever and going up and um beating this thing physically because she has she starts with very low um vitality which is your physical defense um we can also move around the grid here it's not really necessary but it will be later on as you can see uh, very simple battle system we can wait which we will need to do after we run out of action points from using this. And see, it got pushed back a little, which is good because we don't want it reaching us. You shouldn't have any trouble with this battle um, to begin with, but... AP action points. That can be for anything. That could be like it increased its strength or I don't know. Hey, he said two or three times. That was four times. Sometimes it takes three depending on if you get a crit or not. And you're going to get something. Everything is random each time you play or each battle you do. If, like if you reset and do another, do the battle again, you might get something different. Um, when you gray out the item, that means you don't get it. So make sure um, to get the items that you want. Um, you learn the spell Flare. Have our menu. This game does not have tank controls. Uh, which I like. I appreciate that because I hate tank controls. Seems strange that there were no tank controls. They didn't use tank controls in this game since all the backgrounds are pre-rendered, but whatever. There's a lot of constantly changing camera angles. Hey, what about him? He's dead. Really? Thank you. So I guess my time is up. Hey, Angel. I'm not gonna ask you to take me to heaven. But will you pray for me at least? Are you out of your mind? There's no bloody way I'm going to pray for you. But I guess I owe you because you saved me too. Payback time. Shut up! Keep it down! Okay, let's go. Stand up or I'll leave you here. What happened? It doesn't, doesn't hurt anymore. I'm cured. Yeah, and so I cured you, so what? You? You cured me. But, but I was almost dead. I'm confused, so you really are an angel? Don't be foolish. <laughs> Do you really think that there are angels on Earth? I'm no angel. I'm just a medium with a little curing. I'm, I'm Edward J. Plunkett. I know I look pretty shady, but you don't look too wholesome yourself. I... No, I'm not like you. And this is no place for people like you. Why did you come here? I heard a rumor. A rumor? I heard something in London. That the son of some rich family bought an old monastery. Spent a ton of money to convert it into a house. I heard he brought quite a lot of harlots here. 
Seems like he was having a great time. So, where is this monastery? That's what I want to know. I came all this way to put a poor man's fear of God into this rich bastard. So far, I haven't found anything. Then this monster attacked me. I, I almost got killed. If you'd come any later, no doubt I'd be singing hymns in his stomach right now. I shouldn't have bought such a good horse. She's too fast. Too bad you won't be hearing me sing those hymns. When I was a boy, I was a pretty good soprano. If you don't stop talking, I'll leave you here. My name is Kudalka, and I'm only going to say this once, so don't forget. If you want to get out of here alive, I suggest you stick very close. Got it? Charmed, I'm sure. So, the first thing that you'll notice, um, aside from the incredible voice acting, is that the dialogue in this game is absolutely amazing. It, I can, like, see myself s sitting in, like, a theater and, like, watching a play like this. And everything is pretty much conveyed through the motion capture and the voice acting. Um, ah, oh, damn it, I... front so they don't reach her. They cannot move past the person who is at the top of the order. Let's switch to a knife so we have at least some kind of weapon for him. Ah! You cast a spell and the spell was jump on him and bite him. That's not a spell. So your magic, uh, right now you just have heal and flare. Um, Edward can use magic too, but he sucks at it. All your stats are customizable. If you really wanted to, you could make him a magic user as well. Um, but if you really want to make another person a magic user, you should do that with a third person in our party because he is, um, he starts with, uh, uh, stats that you can go either way with. Um, I still like making him um, a physical attacker but you know if you really wanted to you could make him magic user but Edward he's best utilized as a tank dialogue is just so incredible like I love how they talk over each other and they whisper like they just oh love it so okay let me explain the stats to you strength is how hard you hit vitality is um, how hard you are hit if your vitality is higher then you won't get hit as much physically um, not too much of a problem for Kadelka because uh, she's not really going to be um, in um, the uh, yeah she's not going to be uh, up close to the monsters a lot except if the monster has a gun uh, and then she will be in trouble alright um, dexterity is how well you hit uh, if your dexterity is too too low, you might miss. Um, agility is how many attacks you get and how many actions you are able to perform. Um, it still follows a certain order, but uh, um, if your agility is too low, you just won't get enough turns. Um, so that's a very, very important stat. And you can actually, um, you can actually cheat a little, uh, well, a lot, because this combat system is admittedly very broken. And, uh, if you, if your, uh, agility 
um, it, you, you just keep making it higher and higher and higher, then your enemies will never get a chance to attack. So that's one way you, you could do it. Um, intelligence is the strength of your magic attacks. Piety is the defense, your magic defense. Mind is your dexterity, but for um, your magic attacks. And luck is... Um, in many unnoticeable ways. Thanks. Um, uh, this mainly affects the quality of the drops that you get, so it is important, especially uh, when you're looking for an item that you really want. So make sure to throw a few points that way when you get the chance. Okay, we're gonna leave Kadelka with the pistol right now because uh, that way she uh, has a way to attack if she runs out of MP. So right here it says it's been locked from the other side and can't be opened from here. But yeah, all the acting in this game was done with uh, traditional theater techniques. Um, and uh, the motion capture does so much to convey, like, even though the graphics were so limited back then, there's so much conveyed through each scene because of the motion capture and the voice acting. And motion capture back then was barely developed. It was a barely developed technology. In fact, they had to uh, record all these scenes in Los Angeles because... Um, Hiroki Kikuta, who made this game, um, wanted to have scenes with up to four characters in them, and they couldn't do that in Japan. Um, there was a very limited, uh, kind of stuff that they could do with, um, with the motion capture. And in the cutscenes, save for the FMVs, there's no, like, switching between camera angles or anything like that. Everything needs to be conveyed body language, and voice acting, and they do it incredibly in this game. It's just amazing. to make everything even. There's gonna be a cutscene in a bit. I'll explain a little after. I, I mean, I'm gonna keep explaining stuff throughout this entire game, but I'm not gonna do it all at once. There is an old couple in the room, Ogden and Bessie Hartman, who say they are the caretakers of the Nemeton Monastery. How unusual that you two have decided to come to our rural district. There's really nothing interesting here. It has gotten so cold outside. We weren't expecting any visitors. The soup is all we have. Please, have as much as you want. Oh, yes, please. Thanks. It smells great. Wouldn't you like some, dear? Don't you like potato soup? No. It's not that. I'm all right for now. 
Thank you for your hospitality, though. <laughs> no trouble at all. Please let me know if there's anything we can do. We are the only ones who live here, and it's so rare that we get any visitors. So are you two really the only ones who live here? Why do you ask? Well, it was pretty foggy, so I couldn't tell for sure. But this building looked like an old church or something. It seems a little big just for the two of you. You're right. In the ninth century, a saint from Ireland named Daniel Scotius built a place of worship here to appease monsters and evil spirits. That was how the Nemeton Monastery started. Or so I heard. Monsters. Is that right? Yes. What about them? You might not believe this, but we saw a monster on our way here. Is that so? You saw it too. You mean, that monster's been around for a while? Well, we've been taking care of the monastery for a number of years, but from about six months ago, monsters have been appearing. We see them more and more every month. And I used to be a sailor. I'm not afraid of any monsters. Oh, dear. What if something terrible happens to you? We almost got killed back there. Now we're out of bullets. That's not good. The monsters might try and attack you again. I'll spare you some bullets. Thanks. That'd be great. Looking after others. He's so wonderful at that. So, have you two been together long? <laughs> yes, quite a while. Now, all he does is paint and maintain this old building. That's his daily routine. But back in the old days... Thanks, Ogden. I owe you one. been locked with a red key. Keep your eyes out for a red key, everybody. Now this would make good rations. Let's take some with us. I can't believe it. Are you still hungry? I didn't have anything to eat or drink for three days. Of course I'm hungry. Speaking of which, you wasted all of that food. What's wrong with you? Yeah, if it weren't poisoned, then I would have had some. Pardon? I said, if the soup weren't poisoned, then I would have had some. Got it? Poisoned. No way. Just a little bit. I smelled some poisonous plant. What's that? Oh. Um, I can tell you how you're going to feel. In about half an hour, you won't be able to move your body. If you don't find an antidote, you'll definitely die. Uh, so they really were trying to kill us. But why? Don't know. But it seems they're quite used to doing it this way. <laughs> They must be hiding something. Listen, Edward, I'm going to try to cure you now. But you have to promise that when I do, you won't get mad and rush back to that couple right away. It's safer if we pretend we're dead and continue exploring this building. I think we'll find something interesting for sure. And will we ever? Many inter interesting things. Another knife. What do you mean by this would make good rations? There is no food there. So basically, this game started. Oops. I need to fill this. Um, with an employee named Hiroki Kikita, who worked at Square, Squaresoft, and um, he really wanted to make his own video game. 
uh, because he thought that um, RPGs were really lacking in that uh, they could deal with, like... Really? I'm going to escape. To escape, you press circle and then X, or in my case, triangle circle, because I mixed it around a little. Um, he really wanted to uh, make his own RPG because he thought that a lot of RPGs were too childish and that um, you could utilize the medium to tell uh, much more mature stories uh, with a lot of mature themes and like dealing with serious stuff like all the stuff that's dealt with in this game. He wanted to make an RPG that was dark and um, not, uh, not silly. Um, so... But uh, Square thought that he should just be a composer, and he found it difficult to move up in the corporate structure. Um, so he uh, left with a few other Square employees and founded Sacknoth, which um, this game and Shadow Hearts is made by. Um, I don't know if he was involved too much in Shadow Hearts. I actually don't think he was. Uh, they just took Kadelka and uh, used it as a base for Shadow Hearts. Um, But, so that's when he started making Kadalka, and he wanted to make a, a, a horror RPG. And nowadays, when you think horror RPG, you think something like from uh, an RPG maker. Um, which is interesting, because this came way before that. Or, well, there was RPG maker before then in games like Corpse Party that were made around this time that I guess you could also consider a horror RPG. Um, but yeah, so he did a lot of research. He, I think uh, one source states that he uh, bought over a hundred books on British history. He decided to, um, dang it. If your ally is in front of the enemy, you can't shoot them like that. You can't target it. And uh, he decided to set this game in 1898 because he thought that it represented um, the crux between uh, believing in, like, magic and when science was starting to become popular and everything like that. Um, so this takes place in 1898 in Wales. And... Man, is it cool. I think they actually went and did research in Pembrokeshire. Uh, they were inspired by a lot of the ancient ruins and the architecture around there, and that's how uh, how this game came to be. Um, and he chose the name Kadelka for um, and Kid Joseph Kadelka was a uh, uh, photojournalist, um, and he thought that it it sounded cool because it didn't have any kind of, it sounded like it didn't have any kind of specific ethnic origin and that it sounded cool and mysterious. So that's why her name's Kadelka. There's light coming from below. There must be a room underground. While they were recording in um, Los Angeles, uh, I think they, I think they recruited, recruited everyone in Los Angeles. Um, it seems natural that they would. Uh, so yeah, I guess that worked out for them. The place where they uh, had to had to go for the motion capture was also the place where they could find a lot of aspiring actors and everything. So that's why we ended up with this. And uh, for a lot of these people, they were their first roles. How many Listelle did we get? Because just because it says we got one. Ooh, I have three. Do not be afraid to use your Listels. Like, seriously, don't. You get more than you know what to do with. Edward can heal himself. Um, I don't have Edward heal Kadelka though, because her piety is too high. That's another thing with this game. Um, it will... Um... Mystic Hammer. Oh, shit. Mystic is um, something that does not deal damage. It only does not deal damage. It saps MP, which you don't need. Again, this game is very broken. I love it anyway, but it's very broken. Um, 
Let me level up one more time before I go to fight this boss. Uh, Vivian Bathica plays Kadelka. Um, unfortunately, I don't think she does. She um, she did really anything else after this one, which is a shame because she does, does an amazing job here, and you'll be able to see more and more why through each cutscene, especially one of them um, at the beginning of Disc Four. I writ wrote down everyone plays everything here. Um, there's another character that's actually played by Sarah Paxton, and that was one of her first roles here. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about this game. Okay, and Edward is voiced by Michael Bradbury. I think he did some voice work for um, World of Warcraft. Um, but I don't think he really did anything else except some additional voices, which uh, is a shame again because he also does an excellent job. Um, yeah. And his name is Edward Plunkett, very loosely based on the actual poet Edward Plunkett. want her to keep using flare, the more you use your spell, the stronger it gets. So even if it sucks at first, because it will, trust me, it will suck at first once you start moving on to harder enemies, but very soon, it's going to become extremely powerful. Like, she's gonna be the beast of your party. heal even though I don't need to because it, your heal will become stronger as you use it and it'll become heal too and it will be able to heal um, two uh, party members that are adjacent to each other. Same with attack once it becomes flare too it will be able to deal damage to enemies that are directly adjacent to each other. And then three and then I think it might level up a little more four or five maybe I don't know but I can't imagine there being a use higher than three because we don't, there, I don't remember this game ever having, you know, more than three enemies in a fight. This is the point in the song that tells you this, this battle has gone on for way long. Get a move on. I'm gonna grind a little bit. Well, I mean, not grind. I'm just gonna go up two levels, and then I will become stronger, um, I, and my MP will come back. I decided to level up two times instead of one. Uh, the scimitar we found is a water scimitar. That's not gonna work in this fight. And while I was doing that, my normal knife broke. Um... because the weapons in this game are breakable. Uh, fortunately, they don't actually break all that often. You use it like 15 times after like 15 or so attacks, it stops at working and you get plenty of other weapons, so, you know. 